And once again, a good morning from the 4A Regional Championships here in Abilene. Rocky Downing along with Bernie Vancella, our studio engineer. We have Benny Wallace alongside as uh, day two is here in the quest for a state championship berth. Runs through today, and the Tigers have a bunch that are wrestling. And in this opening round, we have six, five of which will take the mat. One has a bye, but this is a big, big round for the Tigers. It is, and it's a grueling round because if you're, you know, just came out that back door, you got three matches to win. And usually it's just going to get tougher and tougher and tougher the further back you go on that back side. So uh, some of us are here, though, only have one win to go, and we'll be right scheduled to go on to state next week. So good luck to all them Tiger wrestlers out here today. If you just joined us uh, today and really haven't been following through yesterday, we have two that are qualified for state. Gavin Ware at 195, Red Cop is at 106. They'll wrestle tonight for the regional title, but they are guaranteed a trip to the Bicentennial Center next week in Salina. Uh, Parker Tholstrup and Reed Knitter are one win away. They're in the Constellation semifinals waiting for these rounds to take place, and then the other Tigers will be uh, wrestling along the way as well. In this first round, Brighton Shoemaker is our first Tiger to take the mat at 113 pounds. They are underway wrestling three mats, 106. There are some buys even in this round still that are taking place, so this will be a fairly quick round, we suspect, compared to what the normal regional uh, consolation cross-bracketing is. Right, this round will go fairly quickly, but after that, it'll be solid from there out. Right. Uh, we do have one other note, Tiger note, and I'll mention this again uh, a little bit later on, but uh, Brandon Spielman, uh, Clay Center Tiger swimmer, has qualified for the finals in the 100-meter freestyle. He did that yesterday, swimming a time of 50.98, and he'll be in the finals in the 100-meter freestyle in Topeka today. They're getting scheduled to start at around 10.30, so not far away, and hopefully I'll get some uh, results on that to pass along as well. But exciting time for, for Tigers across the board. Here are the Tiger wrestlers waiting for uh, their chance to take the mat. The first one up will be at 113 Bright Shoemakers. Stay with us. We'll take this time out and be back in just a moment. A history of excellence. That defines Clay Center Tiger Wrestling. And at Clay County National Bank, we are building our own history of excellence. I'm Julie Hamill, and we're proud to help sponsor the coverage of the Tiger wrestlers this season. We recognize and salute these young men and the coaches who continue to strive for excellence. Join us in applauding the efforts and accomplishments of the Clay Center Tiger wrestlers. We're Clay County National Bank, member FDIC. Replacing a roof is a substantial undertaking. It's one of the biggest financial commitments a homeowner will make. But the long-term value of a solid, attractive, and leak-free roof is well worth it. McGee Roofing offers residential and commercial roofing replacement, along with guttering and siding. With the colors and textures available in siding, you can customize the look of your home or business. For roof replacement or repair, gutters and siding, McGee Roofing is committed to customer satisfaction. Call them for an estimate. Robbins Motor Company of Manhattan is a proud supporter of Tiger Wrestling. February means it's time for their annual truck month sale. It's Robbins Chrysler, Don, Deep Ram, and Fiat. Test drive new 2018 Ram truck. It's the longest lasting truck in America. Now finds the move with deep truck month discounts and 0% for 72 months. Now is the time to buy. See the complete inventory online at RobbinsMotors.com. We'll see them on West Anderson in Manhattan. When looking for tires, you want the best ride and greatest safety while staying within your budget. Five Creek Automotive delivers on all three. Now through March 31st, when you purchase a set of four select Goodyear tires, you'll receive an $80 rebate. Make sure you buy the tires that deliver superior Goodyear performance and dependability. From quiet rides, outstanding tread life, top fuel mileage, or superior traction, you'll find the right Goodyear tires at Five Creek Automotive and place them. We bring you back to Abilene, the opening round of the cross-bracketing section of the 4A Regional Championships underway. They're wrestling the 106-pounders right now at 113. Bryden Shoemaker is waiting to uh, get on the mat. Also in this round will be Keegan Brownell at 145, Ethan Alquist at 152, Tyson Tipsor has a bye at uh, 160, Clinton Schultz at 182, and Logan McDonald at the heavyweight uh, will be wrestling in this round of the cross-bracketing. Uh, we're going to get you... Uh, Back to the station. Are we next available? Next available. Next available. So we're going to keep you uh, here for just a moment, uh, kind of outline the day ahead. Now, if you look online and look at the, the scheduled start times for the rounds, 
don't go by that because it's going to be much different. They have announced, as they did yesterday, they will wrestle ahead when they have the opportunity. So those were approximate times. You know, they said 1 o'clock for the Constellation Quarters. It's going to be earlier than that, I can tell you. And so that's going to bump every roundup. The championships, if you're wanting to get down and, and see some of the Constellation Finals or championships, plan on being here earlier than the posted time. And we'll keep you up to date on, on the air, but... Uh, that is definitely going to be earlier than what is posted. And they've announced that to everybody. I just don't want sure. I don't want someone to get caught where they were planning to get here to root somebody on and then uh, look at the, you know that posted time and not get here in time. So we'll keep you we'll keep you up to date. Listen to us. We'll let you know when, when things are happening just here. Get your stuff done and just get on that. Exactly. So. Enjoy some rest. <laughs> Enjoy the Saturday in, in Abilene here in the Forty Regional. We're going to take another time out. We should be pretty close uh, after this break to having Brian Shoemaker take the mat at 113. You started young. You learned. You trained. You stayed focused. And you cultivated a passion for wrestling. It all began by being a part of the Clay County Wrestling Club. Established in 1972, they have been laying the foundation for outstanding athletes. Congratulations on your commitment and success. In one-on-one situations where you are the only one who controls your destiny, continue to rise to the challenge. Good luck at the regionals. From your fans at the Clay County Wrestling Club. As a third-generation seed company, Oldie Seed has pioneered the development of soil-specific hybrids that thrive in your soils. Our know grow research program is the largest in the Midwest and utilizes advanced technologies including List, Extend, and Liberty Link soybeans. Oldie's research program delivers top yields while helping you win the war on resistant weeds. This season, don't settle for anything less than a soil-specific seed from Oldie Seed. And the first of the Clay Center Tigers to take the mat in this cross-bracketing round is Bryden Shoemaker. The uh, freshman is uh, going to be matched up against a wrestler from Larned in this round. Corbin Weir, 7 and 13 on the season, a freshman as well. So two freshmen will go head-to-head. They are checking in, and Shoemaker taking the mat as we speak right now. So here's where you survive in advance or, you know, your season comes to a close. That's what this round, these rounds are all about. Yeah, you have to give it everything you got right now because it's uh, do or die on these on these matches. And we are underway. One minute first period, of course. Deep shot in on Shoemaker by Weirs of Larned. He's got that inside single leg. Although Shoemaker almost got out of it, then got rolled through, and he's going to end up with a takedown again. So trailing two nothing to start. Weir got kind of an outside single and kind of sucked it in, and uh, Bryden did a good job of countering it. It just kind of went too far, went over the top, and, and Weirs came up on top with a two-point takedown. But right now, uh, Ryden's right got space. He's trying to get to his feet, trying to work his way up. Down to nothing, 21 seconds to work first period. Now Weirs flattens him back out on the mat, trying to slip the half in. And Shoemaker keeping that away. Builds the hand off. That was nice. He gets his face back up. He you got to get up to his feet. He's trying. It's a short period, so only eight seconds left here. Trails 2 0. Down to three seconds, and they'll end the first period down to nothing. Right? Shoemaker, freshman against the Larned uh, freshman Weirs. So it's 2 nothing. The coins off. Choice to Bryden. And they're going to want to go back on their feet. So he's going to take so he's top. See if he can ride him and turn him. So he will take top. Down to nothing. Biden will enter on the left side. Was the start. Back to the arm, gets that one. He's trying to peel it in, gets a hold of it. Now he has to let go. There he goes with a half. He's got to bar that far arm. He gets to the opposite side, so he resets and comes back around behind and covers the hit. Just underway, second period. Shoemaker trails 2 nothing. Got a little tilt, unable to get that. Weir's kind of just pulled on him and tried to pull him down, and he cut it across. Now he's 44. Oh, he almost got back points, but he only got a one count on it. Now way out to the side. Going around to the front. Weir's has got a leg, right. so now he's going to have to be careful here. He's cross-facing him, trying to fight it off. Cross-facing. Now he got the ankle. Got to get in behind, and right now he's not in real good position. Now Weir's to his feet, almost facing him, and he'll get the escape. 3 nothing. Shoemaker trailing here, back on the feet. Open Weir's was kind of coming up, so Ryden just kind of decided to cut him and get rid of him, and then now he's going to reset here. 
trying to get a takedown. Tried to go down low. Now the headgear goes down over the face of Fryden, so they'll stop action to let him readjust that headgear. But if he get a quick breath and go, 54 to work second period. Comes back to center, snapping it all and getting ready to go. He needs a takedown here. Finish this second period out to get back within one. And we're set to work, and whistle start back again. 53 seconds, second period. Shoemaker trailing 3-0. The Warriors come out heavy-handed, heavy-handed. Right now, Ryden trying to get an inside tie and get something going. Up high, now Weirs goes low. Shoemaker blocks it. Does an underhook, kind of lifts, but nothing there, so they reset. Still a lot of heavy hand fighting, a lot of... And he tries an inside single, and it's not there. He can't pass the back out. Down to 23 seconds in the second period. Brighton Shoemaker trailing 3-0. Brighton resets, kind of breaks apart, and then he reloads and reloads. Uh-oh, Weir's comes in with an, outside, with an inside single. Brighton's doing a good job of cross-facing. Got the back ankle, so he keeps spinning and spinning, trying to get around. Five breaks seconds. the leg. Can't get, can't get it rid of him. Oh, he gets around. But that will not be a takedown. He was unable to keep control of him at the top. But he'll trail 3 nothing going to the final period. Good scramble to finish it out. Corbin Weir's had all of his wrist, or he'd have had that. He kind of just had enough leverage that that uh, Bryden couldn't get around him to get that two points. And they'll start on their feet here to start the third down 3 to nothing. Duck under by Weir's. Doesn't go for it. Well, he's been doing a good job of staying in pretty squared up to position there. He gets an inside leg. He lifts. Let's, now he goes to two on one on that leg. They're on the edge of the mat. They're going to be close. There, they're out of bounds. Great shot. Just ran out of room to finish it off. He, he just kind of left with it and finish it, but he, when he wants to go double handed on it, he lost some leverage. And at 38 to work, we're in the third period. Shoemaker down 3 nothing. Back to center. He's got a lot of work to do in a little time, so he's going to have to take him down, cut him. Or take him down to his back, possibly, and get some back points. But working hard and making a good good effort here to try to get something going. They just set a little kneel down throw and didn't have enough control. Now they lock back up right on the edge. I think he's going to set up kind of a head and arm, but he hasn't just haven't had the right positioning to do that right now. Weir's doing a good job of just kind of going, okay, if I stay in good position, I don't know that I'm going to let it, allow him to have a shot on me. So. Right now, Brighton's going to have to really work to get something going. Do that. Over us, he's trying to jerk him down to the mat, but again, Weir's with a 3 nothing lead, really avoiding anything. Doing a lot of backing up right now, and Brighton's really kind of trying to do something, but nothing's happening. And he's coming back a little more aggressive, looks at the clock real quick, and he's got to get going. Head gear got pulled down again. And the official's going to stop and let him readjust it. It's twice it's just got pulled down. We're so heavy-handed up around the head on him. He's pulled it down twice now. Back to center, 33 seconds down. Down three to nothing, so he's going to have to really bust a good move here. Under 30 seconds. There's, There's a double leg leg. shot in. Sucking it up, sucking it up. Can't quite get it. We're doing a good job of fighting it off. He's got an underhook on him, but that's what kept you from getting in there. Shoemaker comes back in at him. 14 seconds left. Stalling now, warning on Weirs, but down to seven seconds. Five. Whistle went off on the mat next to him. He stops and coaches him going, let's go. He thought it was the, the head official or his lead official. Right. Well, or, Brighton Shoemaker, it's a good battle. He just never could get at anything going offensively, despite being very aggressive the entire match. Yeah, they really should have probably had that first takedown, just kind of. Came over the top and, and just barely missed that. So, hard fought match there by Bryden and uh, comes up a little short. 0 3 loss for the Tigers freshman Bryden Shoemaker, but uh, good effort here this weekend. The Tigers will have Keegan Brownell up next at 145 pounds. We'll take you back to the studios when uh, Keegan's ready to go at 145. We'll bring you back to Abilene. And we do bring you back to the Foray Regional Championships. We have a uh, match that just got underway. We thought was going to be Keegan Brownell's mat, but uh, they have started another one, so we will uh, keep you here and keep give you an idea of what's coming up. We have Keegan Brownell at 145 and Ethan Alquist at 152. They're likely going to be on the mat at the same time. Keegan Brownell is taking on Chapman's Brendan Witts. 
uh, which he beat eight to six early in the year in a uh, duel in the in that uh, opening duel of the season. And then Ethan Alquist has Abilene's Nick Brooks, so a couple of uh, league matchups here in the consolation cross bracketing. Then following that, right into Tyson Tipsword, who has a bye at 160. And then we'll have a bit of a break before we come back to Quentin Schultz at 182. And then at the heavyweight, Logan McDonald. Those are still to wrestle in this round. Earlier, if you missed it in this round, Bryden Shoemaker lost a 03 decision and uh, finished out his weekend and his uh, season as the freshman for the Tigers. So that's what we're waiting on. Well, uh, Keegan's ready. He's got the thing that they're the warm ups off and headgear on and set to go. So as soon as the mat opens up, obviously, we know that's where he's going to be headed. Uh, let's take another time out. We're back in Abilene with Play Center Tiger Wrestling on PCLY. If this season of life you find yourself with some mobility issues, then it's time to talk with the experienced staff at Patterson's Health Mart Pharmacy in Play Center. They have a wide variety of durable medical equipment and supplies to make your day-to-day activities easier and safer. If you're diabetic, Patterson's has special shoes to help with circulation. Plus, they have walkers, crutches, wheelchairs, canes, bath rails, and portable oxygen supplies. Patterson's Health Mart is there to help you through each season of life. The Citizens National Bank is ready to provide you with a great borrowing experience, whether you're buying, building, or refinancing a home. We offer first-time home buyer, FHA, VA, and conventional home loans with competitive interest rates on a national level and flexible term options to fit your financial situation. With little money down, we can assist you with getting into your dream house. The Citizens National Bank, mortgage loans with the personal attention you deserve. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Take action now for a successful crop next year. At Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Feed, we're ready to help you plan for next season's feed control, moisture conservation, and fertilizer needs. For your plan, we'll utilize soil testing and variable seed rates to come up with site-specific fertilizer and seed systems. Now is a good time to establish your fertilizer and chemical program for productive crops in 2018. Wilbur Ellis and Reed Seed Central Valley Ag can help you get maximum yields with multi-hybrid planting. It's really tough to find the hybrid that fits every acre on that farm. CVA's Chris Winklebauer says multi-hybrid planting puts the most productive variety on every acre. We've got this soil type or this soil in this farm. We can put a specific seed to that particular piece of ground. Talk to your CVA field sales agronomist or read about it at cvacoop.com. You and Central Valley Ag, growing agriculture together. Back once again in Abilene for a regional championship coverage of the Clay Center Tigers on this uh, regional championship Saturday. It is a cross-bracketing round, and Keegan Brownell is set to go. He will match up against Brendan Witt of Chapman. This is a uh, matchup from early in the season in the duel that Keegan did win 8-6. to six. Brownell, though, hasn't wrestled much since that time because of an injury that he's coming off of, but uh, looked strong yesterday in his opening match, and we're set to go here against the Witt of Chapman and underway. He looks fired up and ready to go. He comes in pretty hard. Gets an underhook. There he goes to the milk ahead, looking for that back leg. Swipes for it twice and misses it. So he has to back out. Now he's double underhook. Heavy on top. Both down near the mat. Finally gets one of them arms out. Can't leave them both in there. It just doesn't work very well. There he spins around. They come back out, split apart, and reset. With a Chapman sophomore, 11 and 16 on the season. There he does a jerk down again. He's got the front head lock. He tries to get around behind. Steps over the leg. There's a two point quick two. He's got, now he's trying to get back in behind and he's trying to get that cradle, the outside cradle hooked up. He's got it. Swift breaks it. Pulls the hand off and pulls hard and, and pulls Keegan down to the mat. Four seconds left here. He's got to hold on right out here. So a good start for Keegan Brownell as the period comes to a close. He leads 2 nothing. early takedown and was riding very well on top as we go to the second period. Very aggressive. I mean, very aggressive. Yeah. Just uh, forceful from, aggressive. That's... From the uh, hand slap with his dad and coach Michael Brownell to going on the mat and getting after it. I agree. Yeah. Fun to see. Keegan going to be on bottom. Starts on a whistle start. Wick grabs the outside ankle, pulls it forward, and breaks him back down. So Keegan resets. Now he's coming up. And uh, with just does a heel trip, pulls it back to the mat. 
Pickett's and picks an ankle with his leg. Minute 46 to work, second period. Brownell leads it 2-0. Now lifts those hips up and almost gets around, trying to work his way out for a reversal. Which one of them scary leggers right now? He can do a good job of getting getting too high on on top of him where he wants him. Now he comes out, pops the head through, and wraps the waist and gets two-point reversal. 4 nothing. Brownell leads it. Minute 22 to work, second period. With got them legs in, Keegan got the hips up and kept shaking him and got him way high on his head. Then he got an arm through and got that two point reversal. It was a good, good work there. He's covering the hips now. There, I think he's trying to get a half in, but uh, Witt grabs the hand, feels it off. He almost turned him in that first minute period. He's working right now to try to turn him over to his back. He got out pretty high. Now back in position in behind. The strap and he hooks a leg, so he hits the left leg in. Now he's just kind of getting heavy on the head. He's trying to pry that, up, that arm up, get a far half with it. It's not there. They're on the edge of the mat, so they got going to be have to be a little careful what he works and which way he goes. Brownell leading 4-0, 35 seconds left. Now cross base. He's shifting back toward the mat a little bit. Witt would like to get outside and have it stop, and now they do. He can sit along, he'll do that cross space and get that far arm and then reach over. He's been trying to get that far side cradle hooked up and Wick's done a good job to hold him off with it by grabbing a wrist or a hand and, and blocking it away from him. Four nothing lead, thirty to work, second period. Wick quickly to his feet and Brownell breaks him down. Grabbed that leg and it powered him through and they almost went out, but he turned and got it land inbound. Eighteen seconds, second period. Heavy strap and Witt grabs the wrist and peels it off. So uh, Keegan doing a good job covering the waist, staying heavy on him and staying in good position. Down to five seconds here in the second period. Brownell leading 4-0. Hooks the leg, pulls it out, breaks him down, ends the second, leading 4 to nothing. We'll likely have Ethan Alquist taking the mat here very quickly as well. He is next up at 152 pounds. Brownell leads 4 nothing. Witt had deferred, and they will go neutral to start the final period. Witt sweeps the ball outside leg. Keegan pulls the leg back. He sweeps again, misses it. Tries an arm drag on Keegan. Keegan now comes in behind. Tries a far leg. It's not there. Three squares. Witt's trying to set a throw up. Now he's going to fire it underneath and get the inside single leg. His job is trying to block that off. He's got to rip on that arm and try and get it back. Trying to keep that leg from getting pulled in also. There he gets the arm out. Got a cross face on him. He's trying to really push hard. There he breaks the arm. Hey, he comes in behind. He should have two here in just a second. There, there it is. is. Six nothing Brownell leads it with a minute 18 to work. That fireman's could have went wrong real quick because he had it pretty deep on Keegan and, and he fought it off. Minute 10 remains in the match. Brownell leading 6 0. Trying to advance to the consolation quarterfinal. Keegan just saying heavy centered hips. Got a little high there, but they roll out of bounds, so we'll get a restart. One minute remains. As they come back to center, Brownell in the up position with a 6 nothing lead. Coach and dad looks at him and says, hey, you're getting way too high. Just stay in behind. Stay heavy. Don't don't get, give up easy points. Right now he's got a leg hook and he's trying to pull that head and gather it in on an inside cradle. He's almost got it, but he's a little off center. He's got to got to reset a little bit, and there he does. He almost slipped over, and he goes back in behind the control. Good work. Thirty five seconds left. Good thing to do because he just wasn't in good position. If he had tried to take it over, he just probably went to his back. Right. Felt it and stopped it, and just got back in position. Now down to twenty four seconds. Brownell leads six zero. Which has uh, Keegan's right hand. He just got a hold of it, so he can't do anything with it. But same in there. He's got a leg hook. He's got a ankle pinch. Now he kind of gathers up from behind. He's trying that far cradle. Not really trying it real hard. Just try to make sure he's moving, though. Down to three seconds. Keegan Brownell headed on to the Constellation quarterfinals with a 6 nothing win. Good work. So Brownell advances to the next round. He wins it. Six nothing. The next up will be Ethan Alquist. Like he's going over to Mount One. So Ethan will be checking in and we'll keep it 
No, they are going to. No, they need to go final. So we'll keep it right here. Ethan Alquist at 152 pounds, and at 160, Tyson Tipsort has a bye in this round, so he is on to the consolation quarters. Keegan Brownell is into the next round. And then we still have Quentin Schultz and Logan McDonald to wrestle at 182 in the heavyweight. Ethan taking the mat right now. Yeah, that's his morning here. It is. Good win for Keegan to kind of get, maybe get things jump-started for the Tigers. He looked really aggressive. Ethan on the mat. They're waiting for the opponent to show. And now Nick Brooks from Abilene. They did not meet up in the duel here in Abilene. Ethan actually wrestled at 145 in that that match. We are underway. Ethan Alquist at 152. Brooks of Abilene, his opponent. Brooks, a senior from Abilene. He gets a two-on-one rush on Ethan. He can try to get that arm back and controlling Brooks' head right now. So that's a good thing. So he gives him time to get that arm pulled back there. Ethan does an outside single, steps over it. Now he's got a limp arm through, but Bricks grabs it, hooks the far arm, and pulls him back. Still no points. Still no trying to down. keep control of the leg. Ooh, now they done. face up, and they're in good shape again. Went to a hip, but he got his hip back. Oh, now he's turned over. Bricks got caught him there. Nick Bricks, and now he's got him in a bad way. So he's going to have to fight to get off his back here. 15 seconds to try to stay away from the pin. He is holding the shoulder up strong now. 10 seconds. He's been trying to get that right arm back. If he can get that arm through, he'll be okay. But Brooks has got a pretty good hold on it now. Three seconds, two seconds. He'll avoid the pin, but he'll trail 5 nothing to begin the second period. Just a, just got caught barely. I thought he got through it, but uh, got caught and gave up the five-point move. So now he's got some work to do. He's going to take the down position here, start the second period. Brooks is going to get on top on the left side. He starts with a switch and go, go, go. And Bricks tries to jerk back, but he goes back and uh, gets to his main position. There he does a set out. Now he's trying to set out in a switch. Brooks gets in behind and now works a half or try to get a half in. And Ethan avoids now. He does have the half locked in. He tries to wing it, trying to wing it down. Get the wrist, breaks it off, pulls it off. Now he resets, trying to come to his feet. Off was to his feet. Now tripped back down to the mat with a minute 30 to go, second period. Ethan trailing 5 0. Back to his feet, back, trip back down forward. Kind of on the edge of the mat, so there's going to be a little, not a lot of room to work here. Ethan does that outside switch again, rolls through, nothing there. He's trying everything he can, right? A lot of set out switches and everything else. And so far, uh, Nick Brooks has just followed him everywhere he's went and done a good job of, of uh, being the defensive guy. Now he does a little tilt through and comes all the way around. Now he's got Ethan on his back. Get a couple of back points. It'll be 7 nothing. All twist trailing with 46 seconds left in the second period. One of those scary tilts where you come all the way across yourself and, uh, he wasn't able to stop the momentum and went right over. He's got a, a chief push two back points on, on against him. And I think I have, uh, we need to correct Tyson Tips or we'll have a max, and I'll get you that in just a second. Rich runs a half and got to get this in pretty deep, so Ethan's in trouble here. He's bridging, but he can't quite get out of there yet. Ten seconds left. He fought it off in the first period. Just reverses that half and keeps that right shoulder up right now. Ooh. And there is the pin against Alquist, which will end his weekend at 152 pounds. Brooks pretty impressive. Senior. Yeah. Alquist, the freshman, of course. Good win yesterday to advance to Saturday for Ethan. And now it takes the loss here to Brooks. All these losses, they end up something. You go back, you work harder, you get better. You don't want to feel that feeling again, so uh, I'm sure he'll be back next year and get more improved all the time. Absolutely. Alquist with the uh, loss by a fall. Now we'll have uh, Tyson Tipsworth coming up. He is going to wrestle a Rock Creek wrestler, and he should be on the mat here soon. That is match 176. It'll be next available, it would appear, 
Let's take a, a timeout. We'll bring you back right after this. Once again, we bring you back to the 4A Regionals here in Abilene at 160 pounds. It'll be Tyson Tipsor taking on Eric Black of Rock Creek. So, uh, mistaken that he had a buy in this round. He does wrestle. He'll take on a 15-4 and four senior, Eric Black of Rock Creek. Tipsor, of course, for the Tigers, a senior as well. He is checking in and uh, be right in front of us here on mat number two. They're running three mats in this round. Now into the 160-pound weight class. Chip Sword yesterday losing to Dakota Wan in the first round and then came back and had a bye on the backside and now wrestling in the cross-bracketing round here today. Senior for the Tigers. Tyson so just did a lot of hand fighting, staying in the middle here. Pretty low. They're both pretty tall guys, but they're they're uh, really bending their knees and getting down there in a low position. A lot of hand fighting right now. Eric Black trying to get some underhooks. Now he goes to an outside leg. And he's got the leg. I don't know why he gave him two yet, but he did. We wish he took it back, I think, just the way he's looking. Yeah, he's, they centered back up, and Tyson did a really good job, actually, to Coach Batten. was like, well, where did you get two? And now they escaped, so it's two to one. Tips or trailing by that one point. I don't know why... <laughs> See, he's even mad at yeah, he, he knows it. Yep, he does. The official just grimaced to himself. You could just see by the look on his face. He's a veteran. He should have just waved it back off. But he did. So anyway, we're we're two to one right now. And then all of a sudden, Black comes in and gets a double leg. Four seconds left. There's the takedown again, and That's it's going to be way. four to one, and that ends the first period. So unfortunate for Tyson. His choice, or the coin toss, I should say, it'll be a choice to black of Rock Creek. He's going to take his up on the feet. He's taking him down twice, so he likes to go on his feet. Tyson nice shoots a low single, kind of missed the ankle just barely. Black's milking the head right now and reaching. He's a long arm. Reaches back, trying to get the leg. You know, wraps the weight, behind. comes in behind. Another two point takedown. And- Tipsword trail six to one. Head gears come down around his throat right now. Outside switch by Tipsword. Yeah. Black following him right back with another one. And Black still in control. Got an ankle pinch and trying to get a far side. Get a far side half. Now he's trying to crunch him in. Pull that leg forward. He's trying to do a, almost a stack on him. Now falls back and gets, tries to re grip the positioning and now does again that same type of little stack he's pulling that leg towards him and that's not good and there is a kind of pin against tip sword and that will end his weekend and in his career with the Clayster Tigers but uh, good work by the senior here but uh, lost by Paul in the second period will uh, close out his weekend we do have two more in this Round at 182, Quentin Schultz goes for the Tigers. And at the heavyweight, Logan McDonald wrestling in this cross-bracketing round. We'll take you back to the studios, and when those two guys are ready to go, Quentin Schultz will be next here on the mat in the Fourier Regionals. We do bring you back here to Abilene. Uh, we're one match away from uh, Quentin Schultz getting a chance to go here at 182 pounds at this cross-bracketing round. To kind of recap what has happened thus far, Bryden Shoemaker a 0-3 loss, so he is out of the tournament. Ethan Alquist. A loss by fall that will end his season. Tyson Pipsort, a loss by fall, ends his season. And Keegan Brownell wins a 6 nothing match to advance to the consolation quarterfinals. So that's what's happened thus far. Then we have Quentin Schultz at 182 and Logan McDonald at the heavyweight in this round. The next round to consolation quarterfinals coming up. We'll have uh, uh, Keegan wrestling in that round. Also, uh, Reed Nitno. Uh, we do have one more in that round, though. I was thinking already set. Are they already out to the consolation semifinals, I guess? So Keegan's the only one we have. Keegan so far, and then we still have Quentin and Logan yet to wrestle to see if they can advance to that position. By the way, K-State basketball, free games coming up at 11 a.m. We are going to have it on the air, but we'll break in any time we have a Tiger wrestler on the mat and bring that to you live, okay? So uh, throughout the afternoon, uh, rest of the morning and afternoon and evening, we will cut in any time we have a Tiger wrestler headed to the bat. Uh, but we will have uh, the pregame in K-State hosting Iowa State and Bramlage on the air in between our uh, Tiger matches. We have a match 
just opening up in fact uh, I think we're about ready to go for Quentin Schultz awesome. a pin taking place in the second period of the match before Quentin so he is headed in to check in good timing absolutely Quentin Schultz 182 pounder here for the Tigers yesterday lost to Caden Kleitz of El Dorado and then had a bye on the consolation round so he advances here to the uh, consolation cross bracketing on a Saturday morning. Okay. We're checking in, just about ready to work for Quentin Schultz. Chance Hayden, uh, was he a senior? Senior, yeah. Junior. Junior? Junior. Was Chapman? Chance got a heavy collar tie and reached for the arm, and Quentin's uh, blocked that off. and now they're just wrist fighting, staying in the middle of the mat. Trying to work something here. Squaring something up and moving them around a little bit. Went and met Hayden earlier this year. Lost by a fall in that early season duel against Chapman. Went with some length on Hayden, but uh, Hayden much stockier than Schultz. Bulkier looking. 20 seconds, no score as of yet. Little hand fighting going on. They start to tie up, looking for some wrist control, down to 10 seconds. Can't see even grab his Clinton's wrist and gets those broke away. Three scares with him, get the squares, get the underhook. Two seconds, and the first period will end. No score on the board as of yet. Coin toss belongs to Aiden of Chapman. He will choose down to begin. The second period about to go. Schultz will be in the up position. No score as of yet through one period. So it starts on the left side. Tries to get him blocked, but Hayden comes to his feet now. Wasn't trying to break him down, but he, he breaks away and gives up a one point escape. Schultz goes in, locks up. Head forehead to forehead right now. Still kind of battling for some wrist control, both wrestlers. You can see a lot of shots in the first period. They were just both really trying to stay in a square position and move each other around and find that shot. It just wasn't there in that first short one-minute period. A minute 30 left second period. Schultz down 1-0 on the escape to begin this second period. Now they lock back up. Still no shots. Nothing low yet we've seen from either. No, they're both working high and heavy on the arms and, and the heads. They're doing some inside inside hooks. And there goes a low shot by Quentin that gets blocked by Aiden of Chapman. He spins around and gets two against him. So Schultz is down 3-0, one minute left, second period. Aiden trying to bury a chicken wing in, can't quite get there. Clinton blocks that off, so he comes to his hips and he gets broke back down. Now he's digging that chicken wing in again. Kind of got a little more in control on Schultz. Aiden working on top for Chapman. He leads Clinton 3-0. He's got that chicken wing in, he kind of pulls across with it. He's got the chance. Quinn's going to have to be very wrong. Okay. Official down, taking a close look. Schultz has been able to keep that left shoulder off the mat, but now gives it up. And with 25 to work second period, he will take a loss by fall, which will uh, end his weekend as well. Young group of wrestlers for the Tigers. It's a sophomore and uh, wrestling here at 182. He is pinned by Hayden of Chapman. So in this round, we have one more to wrestle. That's at the heavyweight. That'll be Logan McDonald. And when he is ready to go, we'll again bring you back here to the Foray Regional Championships. He is, uh, let's see, match number 194. So we may have a little bit of a break before Logan takes the mat. When he's ready to go, we'll bring you back again with Tiger Wrestling in Regional Championship action. And welcome back. We do break into K-State pregame to bring you Logan McDonald here at the heavyweight final match. The cross-bracketing round His matchup against Jonathan Pohl of Bueller. A senior for Bueller, but Logan really wrestled well yesterday. He really did. He came out really strong. He's doing it again today. He came out heavy-handed, tried to go for the leg right away and got stopped. Both uh, wrestlers probably about the same uh, kind of feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, right now, Logan really working hard trying to get something going. So he's banging high, and then he's going low, banging high, going low. And right now, hadn't got anything uh, set up to uh, get that takedown yet. 20 seconds, so a short period, and already down to 15. No real shots taken, although Logan's tied up there. A little shuck by he tries. 
reaches for the outside single, but nothing there. Now they just lock up. Eight seconds left. Logan got an overhook there. He tries that suck and misses it, and they go out of bounds. Two seconds remains on the first period. Logan McDonald, heavyweight here. Tigers have advanced one out of this round. Keegan Brownell winning 6 nothing, and now there's the end of the first one-minute period. What you like to see is just like what they went out of bounds. Logan turned and ran back to the center and got set, knowing there's only two seconds left. But he's just he's ready for this bout, I think. And uh, right now, Jordan Cole from Bueller defers, and uh, Logan said, let's stay on our feet. They lock up very quickly this time. Now near the edge of the mat, Logan McDonald drives his opponent from Bueller out of there. Back to center. Just underway in the second period with the sophomore Logan McDonald. And there's a little fake juke on a low leg and comes back up high. He's done that little slide by and then reach for the single leg. He just hasn't really had the opportunity to go after it yet. Done that a couple of times. There's an arm drag that kind of just misses, slides right down it. Then it's 24 left, second period, no score. This to advance to the consolation quarter final round. Got an overhook on that right left side. Tries to go down low. Nothing there. Tries to shuck it by again. Same type of shuck by. Guy drives him near the edge of the mat. They circle around and step out and they'll stop it with 58 to work, second period. Should be getting a stalling or uh, something called here before too long. Uh, against Jonathan Colt is Logan has definitely been the aggressor without a doubt. Just keeps on doing things and so far Jonathan Cole has just tried to block everything he's had. When there's a single leg he's got the guy reaches for lower and the dog goes out of bounds. Coach is even yelling at him. Yeah. He's his own coach. Right. Yeah. But a pretty young official on this match so it's going to be hard to get that. So we just need to earn the match and Get the take down. 35 to work, no score, second period. Now, front headlock by Cole of Bueller, and he's going to step across and have a two point take at it. Logan, just a small mistake, costing two points. He did, uh, the Cole just there's hammering the head, and then Logan kind of lost footing, went down, and then he just jumped on him and got around fine. He does get an escape, so McDonald is down two to one with 10 seconds left in the second period. And some underhooks in. Now drives toward him. Both trying to set a throw here. Right on the edge of three. And two-point takedown. McDonald reclaims the lead at three to two. Right at the buzzer. Wow. And they will go to the final period. Two seconds left. Oh, they are going to put two on. Yep. But McDonald does reclaim the lead at three to two. Big-time play right on the edge of the circle. Now back underway, and that will end period two. And McDonald's up by one. Good scramble late. Logan McDonald against Cole, Jonathan Cole of Bueller. And we're back underway. McDonald has that one point lead, three to two. Exciting match here. The very tight. It's going to be who makes the mistake or who makes a good move. One of the two and take just the other one taking take advantage of it. The wrestlers locked up. There's that shot by both wrestlers trying to do it now McDonald near the end trying to trip as they go out of, outside the circle and they'll come back to center I still say Logan is being more aggressive right now he's really trying to get something to, to happen now Cole reaches in and double hands he's trying to really pull Logan down and get him, get him to get low again Logan's got an underhook kind of jacking that up uh oh single leg by Johnson Cole gets that outside leg picked up oh Gets it back. McDonald gets it back. Now he's behind. behind. Now he's got the single. Trips it. Him. Drive, drive, drive. And there's he's a got takedown. Two. So it's drive. drive to McDonald leads. He's trying to get the arm, stay under the arm, stay in, stay in position in behind. One minute left here. Oh, he's got a well, far side cradle, but he got it pulled away from him. Trying to lock it again. He can't get it. Now he's going to let him go. Cut. 54 to work. McDonald leads 5 to 3. Back that is underway. Now, he's gonna, now you're going to see a reverse of roll here. You're going to stay in high. Keep that head. Keep wrinkles in your neck. Pushing hard. 
outside the circle. Center. 39 seconds left. McDonald leads it 5-3. to three. It's bad another saying two on one. Just get that wrist control and just control it. Don't even go low. Don't even act like you're going to go low because you'll get hammered down. So he's going to keep up. He's trying to do that slide. 26 seconds to work. McDonald leads five to three. Staying right in the center, which is good. The clock continues to tick. Jordan Cole kind of double handing, trying to get him, get him to get that head down and pull it towards him. He can't get it done. 13 seconds, right on the edge. Now they back back outside. Cole Bueller backs away outside the circle. Nine seconds. McDonald up by two. Logan, good bounce and he steps. Six seconds left. We're down to four, three, two, and it will be a Logan McDonald win, nearly a takedown for Logan right at the end. And it's a five free final. McDonald moves on to the consolation quarterfinal. Good match there. He, he was the aggressor the entire match. He stayed in good position. Kind of got caught there early, but came right back and got that lead. So a uh, great match there for, for Logan. So he will advance to the consolation quarterfinals. The Tigers have Keegan Brownell and Logan McDonald wrestling in the consolation quarterfinal round. That's the only two we'll have in that round. Getting a note here on when they're starting. So they'll get started at 11.40. It'll take about a 13-minute break. And uh, the uh, next round will start. Now, that's going to be a ways for Keegan Brownell to take the match at uh, 145 and then for Logan McDonald at the heavyweight. But when they're ready to go... Once again, we'll bring you back here to the 4A Regional Championships. Big win for Logan McDonald getting the 3-2 victory. And uh, we'll bring you back with uh, those two matches in the Constellation quarterfinal round. Right now, we'll take you back to K-State Wildcat pregame. And we do break into K-State Wildcat basketball as we bring you Keegan Brownell, 145 pounds, Constellation quarterfinals. Right now, two wins away from making to the state championships. And he is underway right now against the wrestler from El Dorado, Jackson Shell, who is 29-9, a sophomore. Had a deep shot in on Keegan, and Brownell able to fight it off, and they're right back to center. He's really surprised he didn't get him to, and they came back out. He got out of there just in time to get away and get that escape. 40 seconds in this uh, first one-minute period. Brownell starts to duck under. Now a shot in by Shell, blocked off again by Keegan. Brownell certainly some length against his opponent. He tried to get that front headlock and just missed it, and now they break apart. Still going at it now. <clears throat> Snell has an outside single lifted and takes Keegan down. Brownell had a front headlock started. He just couldn't hold it. Been a pretty good streak by Shell to lift him up and take him on down near the edge. So Brownell trails 2 nothing with seven seconds to work first period. Trying to get to his feet, work himself up, can't get there. Kind of does his set out switch. Keep on going. Shell just keeps following him all the way out of bounds at the end of the first period. 2 nothing. Brownell will trail as we begin the second period. The choice goes to his opponent, Shell of El Dorado. Shell won by fall in the front side, then took the loss, and then won by fall to get this match. Deegan coming out with a win by fall in his first match of the tournament, then lost, and then came back with a 6 nothing win earlier. They're going to switch uh, <laughs> leg bands. Chill has a all red outfit on, so he went with a red leg band, so they just switched them. So maybe uh, they didn't switch the points there. So we're, we're now leading. they're really sorting things now out. leading 2 to nothing. The Coach Brownell is asking about the score clock. Said, okay, so we'll take the two and and now they will correct the scoreboard. It obviously was a takedown by Shell. They're arguing that they thought they should have had a take down the first, probably the first one. So both coaches having conversations. So now we've switched the points around. Red's, Red's choice and he's going to defer. So Shell defers. Keegan takes the down position. So now we're ready to work as Brownell will go in that down spot. He's trailing 2-0, just getting underway in the second period. Also in this round, the heavyweight, Logan McDonald, will wrestle in this consolation quarterfinals. Shell starts on the left side. Keegan sits out right away, comes to his feet, trying to feel his hands. Shell just jerks back, takes him right through his back, gets a couple of quick back points. In a bad spot right, right now. Keegan scrambling to get out of there. Shell just keeps on getting it tighter and tighter. 
Got to get out of there. Minute 36 to work for Shell. If he can hold on to it, Brownell really battling to stay away from a pin here. Brownell's got to get that left arm loose or get it out of there because he gonna, can't get away from it. Now, again, just everything he's got, trying to kick out of there and break that arm. Shell went around to a reverse half. Can't see much from this angle. No, I know it. Darn clock, but right now, Keegan fighting for his life right got, now. Shell's got that chin right now on the shoulder, trying to push him down. And there is the pin. Shell's going to get the victory over Keegan Brownell. A loss by Paul here in the Constellation quarterfinals in his weekend. Just that quick, he just kind of came to his feet. Shell did a jerk back from his feet, brought him right down to the mat, and just capitalized on a move that. You, know, wouldn't, you wouldn't think it would have happened, but it did. He just kind of got into a bad spot. Frustration for Keegan, of course, as uh, he knows his weekend comes to a close. But a great weekend, battled back for victory all year long. And then comes out and really has a good regional tournament, considering the time away from the mat that he's had especially. By the way, the team standings, I wanted to pass along for those who might be curious. Marysville leads the team standing. They have the 150 points right now. Abilene is second at 107.5. So Marysville, a pretty commanding lead with a lot of matchups between those uh, two teams down the stretch. Again, Keegan Brownell at 145, a loss by Paul. The Tigers do have Logan McDonald still going in this round at the heavyweight. That'll be a ways down the road when it's set to go. We'll again break into K-State Wildcat basketball, bring that to you live. Right now, we'll take you back to Brambridge Coliseum. And we do break in on K-State Wildcat basketball to bring you Logan McDonald here at the Constellation quarterfinal round. He is a matchup against Jeremiah Slattery out of Harness, 28 and 10, a senior. And we are underway. Logan's wrestled well this weekend. Big win to get here. See if he can advance one more round and give himself a chance to hit the state. It really is. Had a good match that last one. He was real aggressive last night. And uh, South picked off the number one ranked wrestler that is here and and uh, only lost to him by two or three right there at the end of the match. But it's about going on strong, a lot of hand fighting, a lot of head-to-head, overhooks. 30 seconds remaining, it goes by pretty fast on the first period. One minute first period on the consolation side, of course. 22 seconds, no score as of yet. Logan moving in. They lock up once more, tried a little shut by, didn't hit it. Those wrestlers being pretty aggressive with almost the same identical type of moves. Uh huh. So far, neither one be able to capitalize on it. Five seconds. Right on the edge. They work outside the circle. And the clock stops at three seconds left first period. And again, Benny, I'll note Logan, the first one back, racing back to center to get ready to go. Something you pointed out in the last match he was in. There goes the coin toss. This will be pretty big right now. Slattery gets his choice. He defers. Logan's going to go neutral. Go on their feet. Logan liked that last time. He has his choice and, and stayed neutral. There's a two-on-one. He's trying to step into it. The two-on-one wrestle. Tried to go to the outside leg. Had underhooks, though, against him on the outer, other side to counter it. Now, double underhooks by Slattery uh, from Larnard. So he kind of peels him off and gets out of there. Back to forehead to forehead. Slattery had the underhooks in, and Logan still tried to reach across with the leg and trip. He just couldn't get the leg. Logan staying with that underhook. Heavy collar tie. There's a Russian shuck. Nothing there. Right back to center they come. A minute 20. Second period. No score. That's how quickly he's going from one move to the next, trying to find something that's going to work in here. And push these big guys, they... They uh, really have to work hard at trying to get positioning. And once somebody makes a mistake, then they'll usually capitalize on it. Down to one minute, second period, scoreless thus far. There's oh. an ankle pick by Slattery. And McDonald will fall behind 2 nothing. Just reached and barely caught Logan's left ankle and just was kind of lifting it, so it caught him off balance and took him to the back. Now he works from underneath, and he was in the same position the last match. He was down 2 nothing. Second period, he was able to get an escape and a late takedown for the lead. Slattery gets that arm bar, and then he kind of gets 
gets it, comes back up, flatter drops to a leg, tries to knee jams him out of bounds and lands right on top of him. I think he's already had some rib problems before. Right. And he just drove his shoulder right into his chest. So he's grimacing in pain. And they're going to take an injury time out here. We'll keep it right here with you. It's, they tend to Logan McDonald. He went down very hard. He's back. You know, the first thing you think is wind gets knocked out, but then he's landed on top of as well by Slattery. He's almost holding his right shoulder, maybe. I noticed that, too, yeah. They could have shocked. She sent a shock wave all the way up to it. He's kind of leaning up now, and now he kind of stands. Trying to get himself together, and you're right, he could have been just scared and got hit pretty hard and maybe got the wind bounced out of him. You're taking a look at him. They're going to make him just make sure everything's okay. He is moving fine. They had a little blood in the mouth. Looks like they're going to clean up right down below us here. Yep. Kind of jarred, but I'm just glad that he's kind of up and going. No and kidding. Not not too awfully injured where he doesn't feel like he can't move on. In fact, he got up. I think he was ready to go wrestle, and they said, let's get you over here and clean you up. Take, take your time to get, get ready to go back out there. Consolation quarterfinal round. If you win this one, you move to the semis, and then you're one win away from going to state. The semifinal round will be an exciting one coming up, but the Tigers do have a couple wrestling in that one. Back to the center they go. 25 seconds left here in the second. Down by two. And uh, Logan started on the down position. Got to his feet. And Slattery kind of tripped him and got him right back down to the mat. Second period, 15 seconds. McDonald's trailing 2 nothing. 10 seconds left. Slattery goes out high. Misses that opportunity there. But uh, Logan did a good job of blocking that move off. That will close down the second period. McDonald trailing here 2-0. It will be Slattery's choice. And I think he's going to go on top. So, you know, Logan got to his feet a couple of times, and right at the end of that period after the injury, he was right back to his feet. Just couldn't feel the hands away. Logan comes right to his feet. Slattery goes to a low leg, picks it up, and does the same move as he did before. And drove him off the map. So back to center they will come, but McDonald is close to getting up and away in an escape, and then you're within a takedown. Just underway in the third, 2 nothing. McDonald trailing by that margin. Dahl comes up again. He goes to the inside leg, lifts it, takes him back down to the mat. But he's flat to the mat now, so Logan needs to get his base back. Minute and 40 seconds left here in the third, down by two. McDonald's power half by Slattery, and now he breaks that clean. He's got his base back. Try potting up, and now he's pushing up. Comes all the way up almost, and he gets stripped back down. Now back Five again, up again, and trip back by Slattery to the mat. A minute twenty-one remains, third period. McDonald down two nothing. Sorry to say, but I had to take something out of him when he got in like that. Because tripoding like that, usually he's, he's popping right up and trying to get away, but he just can't really get there. Slattery out to the side, trying to lock in a cradle. Logan breaks that. There he goes to a half on the right side. Logan gets. Turn. He's trying to get out of there. In trouble. And there is a pin against Logan McDonald. I think he got hurt more than we know. I agree. Just, just kind of put the a same. whole gas out of him. Yeah, it was not the same at all after uh, what we had seen this weekend. So that'll close down the weekend for the sophomore Logan McDonald, but certainly had a, a good weekend for the place of the Tigers. So we're down to four Tiger wrestlers still going. Remember Red Coppice and Gavin Ware will be wrestling in the championship uh, later tonight. They are going to take a 20-minute break, and uh, that the next round will feature the Tigers. Parker Tholstrup at 120, Reed Nitter at 138. So Coppice and Ware are in the state. They'll wrestle for the finals here in Beastles for Tholstrup and for uh, Knitter, they're one win away from going to Salina next weekend. We'll have those matches when they're ready to go. Again, they're taking a 20-minute break before they start that round, and they're going down to two mats, so the rounds will take a little bit longer at this point. But when they're ready to go, Parker Tholstrup and Reed Knitter at 120 and 138 in the Constellation semifinals. We're bringing you back to Abilene. And we do bring you back from the Key State Wildcat game to 4A Regional Championship action as Parker Tholstrup has taken the mat here 
at 120 pounds. This is for a trip to state, Benny. It's a big one right here. Parker comes in, gets to the front headlock, and tries to milk it down, and Sanchez gets himself out of that, so back to center. Re, re, uh, regroup here. 38 seconds to work, first period. Now Parker moves in on the other freshman. Two freshmen going ahead to head. He gets some underhooks in there. Tried to get him milked out of the mat. Now circles around him behind. If he gets the leg, he's got a two-point takedown. They stay just inside the circle, and so Tholster's going to lead here 2 nothing early. Now trying to get some tilt points right on the edge. Got the lendy arm, and he kind of tilted because they went out of bounds. So back to center. Nice job there on Parker's part. He just kind of got that arm and then reached down with them long arms of his and grabbed the leg and picked it up and got the two points. 12 seconds remaining, 2 nothing. Tolster bleeds in the first period, almost stacked him up on the whistle starts. Kind of started on the right side, almost went into a stack on that side. Not there, potential dangerous, so they'll stop it. Thank two you. Two, yeah, two pack points. One. And then one for, that's not an illegal hole, it should have been potentially dangerous. Cody so Gorge now going to talk with him about that. Chicken wing arm just moved up too far. He's going to stop it. So they're having a conversation outside the circle, regardless of we'll where this goes. Yeah, you got the, got the two points uh, for the back point. So four to one, Tolstrup leads it as we get set to start the second period. Coin toss up, and it will be choice to Parker. And he will choose the down, down position here. So Tolster will take down. He leads 4-1, to one, just getting underway in the second period at 120 pounds. Sanchez starts on the right side and kind of tries to break him down. Gets an arm in, trying to get a chicken wing in. Parker doing a good job of winging it off. Kind of trying to keep his base, keep his feet, keep him in control. Tries to stand up. Now he comes to his feet. He's feeling the hands. Gets the escape. Five to one, Dolstrup leads and shoots in very quickly. Doesn't hit, but staying aggressive with a five to one lead in the second period. As soon as he broke apart, he came in real aggressive for a, a low single, and it wasn't there. Sanchez blocked it. Then they come back up and work back to center. A minute twenty four remains, second period. Dolstrup leads it five to one. Sanchez a little short, a little quick guy. Now he says he's got blood, so they're going to stop this match and Parker. Bolstrup's doing pretty darn good job staying in control, leading five to one here in the here in the sec, second period. Now five one lead, and they're going to bring him over his opponent to get cleaned up. He's got a nosebleed going on. In case you missed it earlier, the uh, the Tigers have two going to the state championships for sure. Gavin Ware and Red Compass they'll wrestle later tonight, and then we've got two in this round: Parker Bolstrup and Reed Nitter that are trying to get the state if they get a win in this consolation semifinal. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, this is a very aggressive match so far. Parkers came out on top, and they're going to be aggressive all the way through at this at this weight class. A lot of quickness going on, a lot of stuff happening. He's back on the mat. Here we go. We're about ready to start up again. So Parker Tholstrup with the lead, five to one. Second period action. They've got his opponent uh, cleaned up now, and now they're working on getting the mat finished up with uh, some wipe down going on. Parker with a great start. Team standings, by the way, Marysville, but before this round, leading 152 and a half to Abilene's 113 and a half. And the team standings, there is start to sing up again. Parker Polstrup's leading 5 to 1 with a minute 15 left here in the second period. They're on their feet, working back and forth. A lot of quickness here, so they're in and out, in and out, trying to move each other, get them angles, and trying to create some kind of position for a shot. One minute left, second period, five to one. Bolstrup the lead. Bolstrup's got an overhook on the right side, goes to underhook. Sanchez goes to the fireman, tries to pull it down, and he gets the two on Parker. So now five to three. Bolstrup does still lead it, but the takedown by his opponent here in the second period. Sanchez tried to hook the right leg in and wasn't there. Bolstrup blocked that. Now he spins around, comes up, tripods up to his feet, close to the edge of bounds. He pushes him and they go out. So they'll whistle it to a stop, bring them back to center with 32 seconds remaining in the second period. Holstrup on top, 5-3. to three. 32 seconds remaining. They're on their feet, back to center. Whistle start with 30 seconds left here in the second. And Parker Holstrup leading 
That escape puts him up by three points, 24 seconds. Been good on his feet. Wanted wrestler Stans did get the uh, takedown in this period. Down to 15 seconds. Tolstrup leads here, 6-3. to three. I can say there's a lot of quickness. They're in and out, and they're really trying to move each other a lot. A lot of risk control and banging around trying to set up a shot. Down to three seconds left. And that will end the second period. Shot in late, right at the buzzer, but uh, late by Sands. And we'll go to the final period with Parker leading 6-3. to three. Yeah, Sands just kind of up, down, up, down, up, down. And he went down real, real low and got a leg. And just think time ran out into the second. So we go to the final two minutes with Parker Tholstrup leading by three. And that's close to heading to state next week. Still a minute 50 remains here in this third. Don't know a lot about Sands, but you can tell that he's really confident with his feet. So he's going to stand and start this this period on his feet. So we know he's got to take him down or cut him and take him down two to three times to win this match. Here comes Bolster because with a front headlock, he's trying to milk it down. But Sands got the hand and won't let go of it, so he has to back out of it. Six to three, though. Bolster with the lead. A minute twenty-five remains to the match. Parker Tholster's probably, what, good four or five inches taller I agree. than Sands, and it's uh, a little bit of his disadvantage, but yet he's staying in there and staying in good defensive position. Sands really working hard. There he goes. He's low he double, leg. double leg. And Parker's got a belly down, or he'll go to his back. Coach is already telling Sands, cut him, cut him. Yeah, he wants to, the coach wants him to let him up. Sands was thinking he might go to a... Uh, Try to get the back point, but they are going to let him up. It'll be 7-5, to five, and it will be Tholstrup with the lead by two with one minute, one second remaining away from State. Coach Door says, you got to reset and redo and do the things you do because you're going to have to quit being a uh, defensive to do not. That's not working out for him. But he's got to take back. back. He's back. Taking straight to his back. Parker Tholstrup with the Tiger pin. Parker Tholstrup headed to the state championship for the third period. Tiger pin, great match to finish up on there. Good thing you listen to his coach because if you get so defensive, a lot of times you just can't stop him from getting you. So he kind of went on the aggressive side, took him through his back and got sick. The freshman headed to the state championships, and he will wrestle in the consolation finals a little bit later on this afternoon. Now still to come in this round at 138 pounds will be Reed Knitter. Uh, they are going to wrestle two mats during this round, and they will not wrestle the next weight class until the one they're on finishes up. So it'll be a little ways down the road. We'll send you back to Bramwick's Great win for Parker Tholstrup, though. He wins with a Tiger pin in the third period. He'll be headed to the Constellation Finals, more importantly, to the state championships next weekend. And we'll see you good afternoon from Abilene, the 4A Regional Championships. We break into your K-State matchup, leading Iowa State there in the second half. We'll get you back after we get Reed Bitter on the mat, wrestling at 138 pounds for a trip to the state championships. His opponent comes from Marysville, Keegan. Cadillo is uh, 15 and 18, a sophomore. Nitter comes in 28 and 17 for the Tigers. And uh, if we can get a fourth one on the state championship. I know. we got a, what do we got, a six foot against the batter. <laughs> Five one, five two. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's not very big, and Reed with a good length on him. So we'll see if that works to his advantage for the Tigers. Hope that pays off. Yes, and we are underway at 138 pounds. Winner goes to the Constellation Finals. More importantly, on to state next week in Salina. Three have booked their tickets already. Reed kind of trying to figure out how to go at this, and he kind of grabs some wrist and got an inside tie. There's a collar tie under hook. Tries to jack him up a little bit. Nothing there, so he backs out of it. Nitter was pinned by this guy in the school earlier. Uh, late in the year, actually. The Dilio came in the third period. Just so much awkward for him because he's so much shorter. He right. really has to try to work at getting down low and try to jack him up. And right now he's trying to do the same thing. There's a little rushes. There's a little leg right. really hits. 14 seconds first period, so short time here. I work so hard in the room a lot of times on those short times to try and get that quick takedown right at the end of the period. Seven seconds left. Takes a shot, but Cadillo avoids it. We're down to three seconds, and we will go to period two with no score in this 138-pound consolation semifinal. Reese is a little tentative, and, and I'm blaming it mainly on just the height difference and doesn't know right. 
for sure what to do, and he can't get down there low enough like he wants, and he's going to start this second period on the bottom. When you weren't getting so low to get at that level, you lose some of your your bounce, maybe. There's a, an escape, though, and it is a read netter lead of one nothing. Did a nice job of wrist control. The video grabbed the outside ankle, and Reed grabbed the wrist as he was coming up and got rid of it and got the one-point escape. Almost had a front headlock in. Now they break away from that. Underhook in for Nitter. Trying to stay in good position, keep them underhooks to kind of jack him up. Or he's got double underhooks right now. Cadillo has got a good head position. Then he goes and gets an outside leg of Reed. He's on the edge of the mask. He's circling there out of bounds. So Nitter able to avoid the takedown, still leaves it 1 0. And that's the danger. He had good underhooks in, two of them. But Cadillo is so low to the ground, able to just reach down and get that leg. He's going to have to, when he gets some underhooks, to reroute his head and try to get his head underneath Cadillo because what he happens is Cadillo just said, okay, I'll just go lower and lower, and they got to hold that leg, and good thing they went on out of bounds. It's still Reed in, in the lead here, one to nothing with a minute left in the second period. Now Mitter locks up again. Both wrestlers trying to he reaches for a trip. This is hard. He's got like a little fist on. He has to get wrap the leg. He got two. And there's the takedown. Three nothing now. Nitter leaps it. 45 to work in the second period. Cedillo tries to scramble through. They go outside the circle. And so Nitter, a great takedown after getting the escape. Unable to get to him earlier. He finally got one on the edge. Not an inch. It's two. It could have been out of bounds real easy. And they called the two point takedown, which is nice. And we're leading three to nothing. Riedel starts on the restart on the right side on top. The half in. Got an inside post on the left side and then a half. And he's trying to just ride it hard. Lift and set him, lift and set him. There he's got the half far arm. Feet. He holds him. Getting back points, maybe some more. 24 seconds left. A little high on him, but he's still in decent position. They're taking a close look. 19 seconds. Nitter leads it. Post to come back, post ahead. It looks tight from here. There it is. There's the Tiger pin. And Reed Nitter is headed to the state championship. The Tigers send four to the state tournament after Nitter gets the pin here late. And he'll get his arm raised as the Tigers get the pin. That's the guy that pinned Nitter earlier. And now Reed Nitter comes back and gets him in the second period. Good stuff. You just got to win the last. The next, and that's the one that's one. important. That's, right? that's important. Move on. Reed Nitter headed to the Constellation Finals and to Salina next weekend. So four Tigers have qualified for state. We still have Red Coppins and Gavin Ware wrestling in the championships later. The next round coming up, we'll have both Parker Tholstrup and Reed Nitter wrestling for third and fourth, knowing that they're headed to the state tournament next weekend. Let's send you back to Bramlage Coliseum and K-State basketball. Once again, we break into uh, K-State Wildcat basketball from Bramlage. Looks like they're about to put that game away against Iowa State and Speaking of putting things away, Coach Begors joins us after the Constellation semifinals. What two great victories for Parker Tholstrup and Reed Nitter to get themselves to state. Yeah, you know, kind of had a bad round, you know, coming into that one. Just unfortunate coming up on the wrong side of some matches. But to come out that round and, and win all the matches we had, that's a good feeling. And, and for those guys, you know, Parker Tholstrup being a freshman and, and just you know, for the battle that he has to go through, you know, throughout the season with, with some of the illnesses that that he faces every day and, and, and those kinds of things. That I mean, that's great for a kid like that. I mean, I really admire, you know, every day that he comes in and the work he puts in with, with everything that he's facing. So, you know, great, great tournament for him so far. Uh, he's got a kid coming up the third and fourth that we beat yesterday. So, uh, should be a good matchup. And then uh, Reed Nitter came out and took care of business and uh, made a second trip to the state tournament. So, um, you know, he's kind of, he's had some ups and downs throughout the year, but has remained pretty consistent, solid for us. And, and it seems like he wrestles a little bit better when we get, you know, the white on postseason. So that's always a good time. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, fun matches. And both to get pinned. Yeah, I got you the know. fall. Yeah, I got the, the, the fall to get through, and now they know they're headed to state. One more match coming up in the round ahead. Uh, and then still to come, uh, Red Coppice and Gavin Ware, of course, uh, went through the semifinals last night. They'll wrestle for a regional title tonight. Uh, give us a quick peek at those matchups. Um, Red's wrestling a kid from Marysville that, that has really looked good this weekend. Um, I know we've matched up with this kid twice throughout the year, and we were able to win both of those matchups. Um, so hopefully, you know, that, that result remains the same, and we can go out there and, 
and get a win there. Um, Russ been wrestling really well, and then uh, Gavin Ware's got his, his uh, third matchup with the El Dorado kid tonight. The two losses that we've had this season have come to this guy, so hopefully we can make the adjustments that are necessary and manage our match a little better this time around. I think they're going to have a better result. I guess one last thing I'll ask you before I let you go, and then you guys get ready for the next round coming up, which is going to be a ways away because they've got to get through this uh, all these weight classes and the finals. But the guys that didn't go on to the state championships or get to this next round, you saw some good things from from those guys. Uh, Logan McDonald, I know we've mentioned a few times, but I mean, he came right back out again and almost got it done. Yeah, he. I mean, he's always had the ability um, to do some good things, and, and a lot of it with him has just been believing and confidence and he's really started to do that and so um you know you get to see that this weekend as uh, just uh, you know maybe a little preview of, of what's to come and you know for the later years but um had a great tournament had you know a great weekend uh, a couple other kids that came out and wrestled hard this weekend the senior tyson tip short didn't make it but uh, you know him not wrestling since eighth grade and then coming out for a senior year um, and in battling, you know, some of the, the uh, physical limitations that he had, he had to go through the struggle. Um, you know, couldn't be more proud of a guy like that. Um, you know, just admire a kid like that with the courage. A lot of kids nowadays, uh, if they're being out there, they don't come back out. So, you know, very proud of him and, and some other kids that came in. You know, Keegan Brownell came back. he has been injured all season, came in and wrestled a big tournament. Um, you know, so, I, so I'm proud of all of them. Uh, great kids, and hopefully we can work in the off season and get them back next year. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it was, I mean, there was some good stuff going on, uh, even though they don't get to continue this weekend. Four, though, are headed to the state championships next weekend. Two in the consolation finals, Parker Tholstrup and Reed Ditter, and then two in the finals later on uh, with uh, Red Coppins and Gavin, where Coach is always appreciate it. Let's go get these last four matches, okay? All right, thanks, Rocky. Coach Brandon Pagor with us in the 4A Regional Championships here. In Abilene, we'll take you back again to K-State basketball. And we bring you back once again to 4A Regional Championship action from Abilene. Rocky Downing, our studio engineer, Bernie Pantella, Benny Wallace alongside. We're just about ready for Parker Tholster to take the mat at 120 pounds. This is the consolation final, so they are way ahead of schedule. We knew they would be. And uh, they're rest- wrestling next available in uh, Parker Tholster just now, getting the opening whistle. And underway, he knows he's heading to state. This is for seeding purposes, a third-place finish or a fourth-place finish here at regionals. This is such a fun match because you're already you're already in, so you're a little more comfortable. So a lot of times you get a little more aggressive and everything. Right now he's underneath with an underhook, and he's got a front, he's got a locked up on almost a bear hug on the side. Releases from that and comes back out and reskid, recenters. Meldo grabs the lower leg and grabs it and pulls. Parker down to the mat, so now he's trying to do something, pull it all the way around. Parker goes all the way across. Still no points. Kind of anybody in spot right now, yeah. Parker does a good job of really getting out of where he was, and now he's back to just trying to put a bunch of pressure on the head, break the hand, because the hand does have Parker's lower leg. You can break the leg if you get a takedown, but two seconds is all that remains in the first period. It does cradle on. I'm surprised they didn't call that a takedown because he locked up a cradle. Two officials talked to each other and said no, they didn't have it. Coach Bigor is asking for the same thing you're asking. So we'll go to the second period scoreless. Parker Tholster for the Tigers here at 120 pounds, one of the four Tigers heading to the state tournament next weekend. Now we've got a caution on Parker's opponent. He won 10-5 over Snellings yesterday here in the regional championships, and so a rematch between the two. They did not meet in the duel this year together. Says you have something there as the wrestlers are. They're, they're leading the tournament right now. They're doing pretty well at it. Their Parker does a cross face, hooks that cradle up, jumps to the other side, same side as the cradle. Now he's going to probably, oh, he takes him all the way across his back, So now he's holding him tight. Got him in good position here. Looking close at it. Long way to work on it. If he can keep him in check, Snelling kicks out and gets the head out, so he goes all the way out of bounds. Though. So Parker just gets three on back points and uh, almost got a fall. But that, yeah, nearly got the stick right on the edge. He leaves it three nothing now. Here in the second period, he started riding, so the back points gives him that three nothing lead. 
Parker starts on that right side, breaks him down flat. Now he's throwing in a chicken wing on the right side. Got the far arm board, and then he goes, jumps to the other side, gives up the chicken wing, still in great position in behind. Now flattens him out, slips the half in on the right side, keeping a lot of pressure on him. He's getting on the ground quite a bit, face down. Now comes back up, and Snelling gets his knees up underneath him and bases up, and now... Parker gets that little tilt on him. He got, I think he got a couple points out of this. There was flagged there were way couple. out of bounds. Let's see what he ends up with. I just heard the Bulldog head coach. I don't know if you could hear him, Benny. Is this college rules? Three. We'll take it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they, they were outside of the circle yeah. when he tilted him, and he got three points out of it. We'll love it. Six nothing. Old strip lead. 35 to work. So to get on that right side, tries to chop the arm. Doesn't, doesn't get fast, so it goes to into a cross base. Schelling kind of sets out. Parker hits the leg in to try to keep him from going over. He's a pretty high on him, though, so he's got to be careful here. Right on Schelling the edge now. Two point reversal. So they'll lead 6-2 to two with 14 seconds to work in the second period. Just got a little bit out of position, and then he got high on him, and, and uh, Jacob Snelling from Marysville took advantage of that. Down to three seconds, they'll whistle him to a stop outside the ring. Six to two, Tholstrup leads over Snellings and Marysville. 120 pounds in the consolation finals. We'll have Reed Nitter coming up in this round as well at 138. Parker starts on the bottom. Snelling goes right to the right ankle, grabs it, stops the stand up, and then four seconds is gone. So we'll head to the final two minutes, final period. Tholstrup's decision, he'll take down. Snellings will work in on top. It is full strip leading 6-2. to two. Jacob Snelling starts on the right side, comes all the way over, gets an arm, puts the leg in. Parker's just going to try to keep good, solid position, not letting him have anything, and he's kind of flattened out. Looks like he's got hand control, though, of Snelling. Trying to get – Snelling's got a – Kind of choked a little bit. He's trying to pull that arm free. The leg in. Now he kicks out. He got right to his back. He's going to a half here. He's got a strap. He's going to maybe get it across. He's really close. Very tight. There it is. And Parker Tholstrup is headed to the state championships with a third place seed, taking third here at the regionals, winning the consolation finals. Second straight pin today. Ben, it's good stuff. It was awesome, you know. He was he wasn't in great position, and all of a sudden, uh, Jacob Snelling from Marysville got a little high, and he kind of reversed him around. He got him right on his back where he wanted him, and and uh, squeezed it up tight and got the pin. Parker Tholstrup, we knew he was headed to state. He'll go as a third place finisher at regionals, winning the consolation finals by a fall. Now we're going to get a break in here. When we come back, we should be pretty close to Reed Nitter taking them out at 138 pounds. Stay with us. We're back after these. Once again, back in Abilene, Clay Center Tigers have a third-place finisher in Parker Tholstrup, winning with a Tiger pin in the third period. And so uh, he knows he was headed to state already, but now goes as a third-place finisher and a consolation final win at 120 pounds. We're waiting Reed Nitter to take the mat at 138 pounds. He will have a Nickerson wrestler, a freshman, 23-11 Dylan Schneider, uh, who he will take on for the consolation final at 138. If you haven't been uh, around with us through the weekend, uh, we still have Rhett Coppice and Gavin Ware wrestling in the regional finals tonight. They do last night. They were heading to Salina Day. They did, you know, and we talked about this a little earlier. It's a long day when you're just sitting here, like Rocky said, was it's almost harder on you not wrestling than than it would be just sitting there. You're hanging out in the bleachers and. Both Sometimes that am mentally, I think. Yeah, you just got to be disciplined on what you drink, what you eat, and everything else throughout the day. So uh, they're going to be ready, and it'll I think be we're checking in. Yeah, yeah. That's worked out well. Good good time on the timing. I do want to update the team scoring. I know a lot of people like to keep up on what's going on, especially with two uh, NCKL teams battling it out right now for the top spot. Marysville, one hundred seventy-six point five points. McPherson's actually moved into second at one thirty-one and a half. El Dorado 123, Abilene 120.5. So those are the top four schools right now in uh, this regional in 4A. Reed Nitter set to work. We're a little false start by 
the official and by the wrestlers, and now we are underway. 138-pound weight class, Reed Knitter for the Tigers, headed to state, he knows that, for the second straight year. Deep shot by, by Dylan Snyder from Nickerson. He gets low on him, and he's trying to double leg him. Right now, Reed's fighting that off. He's got the ankle picking up hard on it, keeping heavy on his head. Now he gets to go around the side. He's cross-facing him. He can step across that arm. He keeps Still it spinning. He's got that leg. Now he hooks the leg for the two points. So good good turnaround there for Reed Knitter because he's gotten a pretty deep shot against him. Now he's going to a four side cradle. He's got it locked up. Trying to lift. He steps in. Now he's rolling him over. Keep on pulling. Now he's got the cradle. He's going to get some back points here. Going to have to shake him a little bit and get the knee in the, in the side. Got it crunched up good. Nickerson it tight in there. Wrestler's grimacing pretty hard. He get that knee in the side. In a short period, runs out of time. So Nitter's going to lead it 5 nothing going into the second period. But uh, in a one-minute short period, to go 5-0. Good stuff for Reed Nitter here at 138. Great start to be a leading at the end of a one-minute period, 5 to nothing. Good job. Reed's going to start on the bottom here on the second period. Dylan Snyder starts on the left side. Reed stands up. He's on his feet. He's trying to peel that hand loose. Can't quite get it. Just a locked out. hand, though. He's going to get a point here. He's working on a reversal, too. He's got the leg in pretty good control. And a continuation, so he's trying to get out the back side of that. He's got a leg. He's got to continue or they're going to stop it. They just did. Stalemate, but it is a point awarded to Reed Nitter on the class 10. 6 nothing. he leads it here in the second period. Reed starts on bottom. Dylan Snyder starts on the left side. Reed comes up, peels him, peels them hands, peels the hand. Let's go. Snyder throws him and lifts him to the back, but he hits a switch as soon as he hits the ground. Starting to come around, but can't get there, and they go out of bounds. They haven't whistled it yet. Now they do whistle it to a stop with a minute 23 to go here in the second period. Just barely missed that switch huh, from... Uh, Truly working out for him, and now he goes back to center to reset, leading six to nothing. Back underway, and he sits out again, trying to hit that switch once more, and he may get it this time. He will. The reversal, he leads eight zero. You got to rock. I can see one foot of each wrestler, and that's it right now. So he's getting the half on the right side, the near side, put in. His opponent trying to rip that hand away. Balled up underneath of him right now under a minute to go. It's Nitter leading 8-0. We're trying to get the left leg in for a cross body right there and get, get the legs in. Instead, he's trying to power half up high. Got the leg across the waist. Got to be careful there. He's not in a really great position, but he's staying behind the arms. Very kind of tries to do, trying to pull him, trying to get a cheap tilt here. Got a power app on the far side. He's got to keep on working his way up. Can't give his hips away here either. either. He's, getting, he's getting too high on him. Trying to stretch him out still for some back point. Yeah, he's got to hips back in position. It's almost potentially dangerous, but it doesn't call him. He's going to get some back point. Got to get his head, hips up now. Get your hips up. Now he's going to be caught in a nearly a cradle. He does break that up and faces, and now they'll stop it at the end of the second period. So Reed Nitter living a little dangerously, but he leads in two. Uh, that's to say the least, but he's <laughs> still in control. He's going to go start here on top on the third period. Start of the third period, he's going to be on the right side. Nitter leads by eight. He knows he's headed to state. Whistle start. He's got an under underhook on the right side. Now he tries to drive that into a half. And he's got that half, but he gets peeled off by Schneider. Now Schneider tripoding up. Where he hooks a leg in on the left side. Staying under the arms, trying to extend him and stretch him, trying to get him out of that tripod. Minute 35 remains in the match. Nitter leads 10-2. So he keeps putting force pressure on him, and he can't quite get him all the way flat to the mat. Now he's got the half in there. Man. Got that half, and Schneider peels the hand off again, so he regroups. Got the half again. Now gives it up. A minute 13 left. 
And I got pretty good on that tripod of trying to shake him and get him too high. And he's got him too high right now. Mitter needs to let go. He needs to get a belly down right now. Oh, but he comes out a lot in some way. Now they, Snyder trying to set up a throw. 55 seconds left. Neither wrestler in control, but both in a very awkward position trying to gain some control. Mitter just trying to hang on right now and see that clock. Maybe would like to see a stalemate. The reason is way too high on that guy, and he, and he got, got away with one there. So now they're in a scramble, and he has to give it up. So he gives up the reversal. And he still leads seconds. 10 to 4. Six point lead with 28 seconds remaining. Well, Snyder trying to get a half in on Reed, but Reed's doing a good job of blocking everything, staying in a good space. 19 seconds, yep. So short time here for Nitter, who's on the bottom, but leading 10 to 4. Dylan Snyder just working hard at trying to get a half in, pushing down on the head, doing a power half. And uh, Reed Nitter did a great job of just staying in good position here. And Reed Nitter, a third place finish to the Tigers 2 for 2 here in the Constellation Finals. They get it done with a 10 4 win for Reed Nitter. So the Tigers have four headed to state. Two of those Constellation Finals winners, Parker Tholstrup. Reed Nitter winning third place here at Region. Nice job by both of them wrestlers to get that third place finish. And that'll be good going into next week because you don't want to wrestle a number one seed if you don't have to. And that's, they'll get a two seed out of it. So good job by both of these guys in this round. Parker Tholstrup, Reed Nitter, winners here in the Constellation Finals. So we're going to take you back to the studio. It'll be a while before we'll get wrestling back on. We will check back in and update you on when they will start the finals round when we know that. It'll be a little ways before they finish this round. I'm sure they'll have a break to get it down to one mat. And probably uh, some uh, the starting lineups and the matchups and, and that type of uh, activity at the three, three match. And then uh, we'll get to uh, to the action. We'll keep, keep you posted on when that will take place. Again, here in the Constellation Finals, two third-place finishers, Parker Tholstrup and Reed Nitter. We'll take you back to the studios. 4A Regional Championship action from Abilene. Checking back in to let you know we will get started with the finals round at 4-10. So 10 minutes after 4, uh, they have gone down to the single mat. They have that set up. They're getting everything else with table workers and things in order. So they're planning to start the championship finals at 4-10. That will feature a first matchup, 106 pounds, Brett Coppas. He will be taking on uh, Marysville's Novotny in that uh, uh, championship matchup. And then uh, we'll have to wait a while to get to the second match, Gavin Ware at 195 pounds. But we'll have both of those for you live here on King Steel The Tigers have four going to state. We know that uh, Parker Tholstrup and Reed Nitter both have taken third place, winning the Constellation Finals. And now the championship finals are about to start. We told you earlier that uh, they would be moving ahead of schedule as, as much as they could, and they have stayed true to that. And they plan to start in about uh, 13 minutes from right now. So uh, we'll be back on with the, the Red Coppers matchup uh, before 4:10. Back on the air live uh, from the 4A Regional Championships here in Abilene. And once again, we welcome you back here to Abilene 4A Regional Championships, the championship finals. The wrestlers being announced right now. We just heard Red Coppers announced at 106. We'll hear Gavin Ware coming up at 195 pounds, and we'll get to wrestling with Red Coppers on the mat. So I just wanted to give everybody an idea that we are on schedule for what they said uh, when they updated it, that they would try to go with 4-10. They're pretty close to that. We'll get started with this championship finals round momentarily. Two matchups. First off at 106 pounds, uh, Red Coppers so close to getting to state last year at the regional championships and lost out in a really, really tight match that kept him from going to Salina. This year comes back, cruises through the first three rounds, He's got himself here in the finals, and he's taken on a Marysville Bulldog and Isaac Novotny that he's beaten twice, maybe three times this year, uh, certainly in the duel and in the place that are invitational, so they know each other very well. That could be good. It could be kind of a troublesome thing. You just can't take anything too lightly, you know, when it comes down to this. But, you know, I think he's ready to go. He's been sitting here all day, and they go out and get a really good warm-up, and uh, I think he's ready to wrestle. Gavin Ware will be wrestling at 195 pounds. Obviously, this is the match that people are going to keep an eye on. It's the top two wrestlers of the state. Uh, his opponent from and, uh, El Dorado is, uh, has beaten Gavin's wife. The only loss to go the year for Gavin Ware coming uh, to this wrestler, Braden Morgan. So uh, this will be a fun one, too. And it, it is hard to beat a guy multiple times. Gavin knows that. 
he would love to give him one. I'm not sure if he want to have just one or two, maybe two. What do you think? Well, you know, if he's going to end up with one, it needs to be the last one. We've <laughs> right. talked about this before. But, you know, any, any of them is good, and then the, it makes the final. If they come down to that next week, right? that much grander, you know. Absolutely, yeah. It, it, it'll be fun to watch. It was also fun to watch uh, Coach Michael Patton warm Gavin up uh, just to have a big body out there to work against, as he will here at this uh, 195-pound championship match. Regional championships, they are currently uh, getting – through uh, the middle weights right now, announcing the wrestlers as they come out from uh, uh, the uh, commentary into the match where they meet, shake hands, and then uh, go about their way to get warmed up and ready for their matches. Rick Coppice in 106, regional championship match at 195. Gavin Ware will have them both live. I'm going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll get you set for the opening match at 106. Back once again in Abilene, we're down to one match, and one match on that mat is 106 pounds. Brett Coppice going for the place that are Tigers. They're going to get by, I think, Devontae Barry's bill. Brett starts right away and gets a little bit of an underhook. Really, really quick, too. Both of these wrestlers are fast. They're going to be in and out on a lot of different things early. Now, Rick's buried the head, swoops for the back leg, missed it the first time. Trying he's to get got the it now. locked up now. Got for the leg, but he's going to have to score with it. He's got to finish it out. He's got the front head locked, still in pretty good position. I think Devontae did a good job of fighting that all the way off because he, he almost had the takedown, but now he, he turns it on Brett and is able to get back and reach for the leg and get it and get a two point takedown. So Copper Sprails do nothing. So we'll work from underneath. Brett faces up and he starts coming, getting his hips forward. Now he comes to his feet. He's trying to feel. They're on the edge, so he's got to be careful here. Yep, the body just pushes him out of bounds and gets a restart. So back to center they come. Coppice trails 2 0 here. Minute eight to go, first period. Two Tigers in this championship final round. As mentioned, Gavin Ware coming up at 195 as well. There's a quick escape. And now a deep single leg shot in. He's very low, now raises up, still has control of the leg. Ooh, he comes right into a half, and he's got that leg. He's pulling it tight. Looking good from here. They have a chance. Tiger Pan, regional champion, Brett Coppice at 106 pounds, falls behind 2 nothing, and gets a quick pick 10 here, a Tiger Pan in the first period. I think he kind of made him mad, didn't he? <laughs> well, he was probably a little worried of that first pick takedown, but he came right out of that really quickly and made some good, fast work of that. That was a great match. Tiger pin for Red Compass, a regional champion. Next up will be 195 pounds. That's going to be a ways down the road. Uh, we'll continue to try to keep you posted on the timing of, of that match coming up. But uh, when it's ready for Gavin Ware, we'll certainly bring you back live and get you set for that final match here for the Tigers at the 4A Regional Championships. Red Compass, a winner by pin. Back again, we bring you to the 4A Regional Championships here in Abilene, and it is, well, the wait is over. And the wait is finally over as Gavin Ware is getting set to take on at 195 pounds for the 4A Regional Championship, Braden Morgan of El Dorado. It will be a tough match here tonight. We already know that. I'll just comment on the Rockies. He checked into the table. He had his shirt on, and that's a warm-up shirt. Okay. That's illegal. He even went out and put his lake band on with his yeah. T-shirt on. Kind uh, weird. <laughs> Morgan has won over Gavin Ware twice this year in two different tournament actions. The only losses for Gavin Ware this season, so they know each other well. In fact, the Tigers know him well. He wrestled Derek Pierce uh, last year in the uh, in the state championships. Yeah, Derek kind of pulled that one off right at the end of the match. Yeah, great match. Uh, Let's we'll see what Gavin can get done here tonight. We're ready to go here as uh, we're underway at 195 pounds, a four-year regional championship. Gavin Ware for the Clay Center Tigers matched up against El Dorado's Braden Morgan. Morgan comes out really strong and pushes Gavin across the mat, and then they come back to center and working back right in the middle of the circle. Ware side to side, kind of circling. Now they lock up. There's a fireman in there by... Where he's got a single leg inside. Got that, still got that single. He's trying to lift. And Morgan's long enough and tall enough. He just wraps around. They go out of bounds. He's a big guy. He cut from about 215, and we got Gavin at about 190, 192. Right. Both good specimens on the mat. 
just the length of Morgan, probably some of the troubles that Ware's had with him. That's for sure. Gavin had a good shot in there with the firemen's, and he just kind of didn't couldn't do anything and there. Gavin kind of gets caught. On, almost had a fireman's, came back out, went to the double. Um, Morgan just so strong, he just lifted him up and pushed him to the side, and then Tim covered for the two-point takedown. Ware's got the legs out free now, working from underneath, down to nothing. Morgan working on top there near the edge. Morgan likes to cover hard. And then he likes to hook a leg every once in a while and then do a couple tilts. They go out on the circle and back to the middle they come. 44 seconds to work in this opening period. Ware trailing 2-0. Final match of this 4A regional for the Tigers. Gavin goes back to center. Morgan on his left side. Whistle start. Gavin comes to his feet. Morgan trips him forward. Gavin comes back up, tripoding up, and now he's trying to get the leg. Lifts the leg to the side. Tried to feel the hands, and Morgan able to break him back down to the mat. Oh, good job. Morgan took the leg in, and Gavin just extended his leg back so he missed it, so he didn't get the leg put in. 22 to work, first period, down 2 nothing. Gavin Ware here at 195. Now he gets his hands free from Morgan. He's really draped on him right now. Put all his weight on top of Gavin. Gavin tries a little sit out and trying to come up. And down to five seconds now. Now he does it to his feet. Two seconds. And he'll run out of time before he can get the escape. And we may have some blood. Morgan is saying he has a bloody nose. He did have one yesterday. We saw they had to work on for a while. So this isn't a good thing because I said if we could just keep going and going and going with him, he likes to take breaks and try to take to get a little uh, for electric breathers. Yeah, and uh, we needed to just keep going with him, but he's got a right nostril that's got blood, so they're going to stop that. So they work on him. They also do some cleanup on the mats. Gavin Ware down to zero. We're in the just beginning the second period coming up. So a blood timeout for Braden Morgan. If you're just joining us for the weekend, we have four place hitter Tigers traveling to the state championships next weekend. Parker Tholstrup and Reed Nitter both taking third place. Red Coppice, a regional champion at 106. And now Gavin Ware wrestling at this 195-pound weight class. Down to zero. He's on the mat, ready to go. They've gotten Morgan cleaned up now for El Dorado, and he'll make his way back out to the center circle. Tigers are going, where's going to defer? Morgan takes the down position. Kevin's going to get on to the side he chooses. Now he makes his way in on the left side. Whistle start back underway, second period. Where he puts the right knee out, and Gavin stops that, gets him blocked. Scrambling around, now he's got a Lundy. Morgan feels the hand off of his, gets out of that. Gavin's trying to stay in in the hole and stay in tight and stay heavy. A minute 40 remains, second period. We're down 2-0. Now Morgan stands, gets near the edge. Where circles back in, but they've been whistled to a stop outside the ring. It is amazing when you see Gavin Ware get a hold of him and look how small he is compared to Ray Morgan. It is kind of crazy. Just not as wide and certainly not nearly as tall as Morgan. Gavin whistle starts. He blocks the inside thigh on the right side, and he tries to break that inside arm down and get, it, get control of that. We've seen Gavin so many times just to get that, that near arm and put it in the middle of the back, scoop the head, and right? Like he he is, can't even get that he move out, Gavin. And now an escape for Morgan, and Ware will trail 3 0 as they walk back to center. Came through his feet and kind of just kind of right before he got to out of bounds, just switched there. Gavin tries to get a fireman's, and it's not there. Now caught in the front headlock by Morgan. Morgan's trying to milk it, just keeps standard out there and keep a lot of weight on his back. Where are staying wide and circling around. Still the front headlock by Morgan, and now a stalemate's going to be called, and they'll stop at 47 seconds to work second period. Where down 3 0. And back underway. Kevin kind of stepped back and looked at him like, okay, what am I going to try now? 
When they go back in and ties up, he's got an inside tie with that left arm. Now they break apart. And he pushes away, and then he comes back in strong. Ware making his way back in to lock up again with 23 to work, down 3-0. Kevin kind of like a boxer darting and moving, trying to stay away from being square with him and just to the sides and make some anger. There's a little shuck ball by Morgan, kind of milking down and circled back and then shucks around and then got the two-point takedown. And now Benelli Blood again has got both nostrils bleeding. Yeah, so they bring him to the side to clean up. Let's get a timeout while we have that chance. We're back with more Tiger Wrestling right after this. Once again, we bring you back here to Abilene. Gavin Ware wrestling at the 195-pound regional championship match. You get Morgan of El Dorado down 5 nothing after the blood timeout back underway to close out the second period. Three seconds. Ware trying to get a point late, and he's unable to feel the hands away as the buzzer sounds on period number two. Give it everything he had that last six seconds, that's for sure. So we're going to go like heck this last period, I guarantee you, to try and get the points back. Official making sure that Morgan is not bleeding. That plug in both nostrils now. Just getting some more blood out on the mat, it looks like, and another break in action. Blood time is not helping us. No, not at all. See a little Gavin right below us here, a little blood on his left arm. They're cleaning up. And we'll head back out on the mat. He's got work to do, but he knows that he's really getting after He's going to go back in there strong. He's ready to get back to the middle of the mat, so he walks out pretty pretty quickly. His choice, he goes neutral. And we are underway in the final period. Ware trails 5-0. They butt heads, and there's a deep double leg in by Morgan, but they're out of bounds. No points. Back to center they come. Come on. Ware says, let's go. He claps his hands together. One thing we were talking about, Gavin can't square to him very well. He's got a great power double. Now we do have more blood on the mat. So frustrating for Gavin Ware to try to keep this thing going and build something. And Braden Morgan continues to have issues with a bloody nose. That's why we were talking earlier because Gavin's kind of like a boxer going side to side to side. Just he doesn't want to square up to him. He's got such a good, powerful double leg. And you square to him, he just blows right through you. And he's such a long armed. Big guy, right? He's just grabbing him. So clean up this blood and get going again. In the third period, Ware trails 5 0. Never seen Gavin like that. He ran back to center and clapping his hands together like, get over here, let's get going. going. Yeah. Still doing some cleanup on the nose. They had a couple more spots on the mat they had to wipe down. I think we're about ready to go. Is Braden Morgan walks back out to the mat. Ware waiting for him right in the middle. Gavin trails 5 0. Third period, a minute 53 to work. They're back underway. Well, he's trying to get something going. He goes for that fireman. Uh, Morgan trying to Morgan set up a throw. Up the throw. There's a two point takedown. Gavin's knee hits the mat, so he's trailing 7 0 now. We'll be in the down position to start with a minute 40 to go and trailing 7 0. Morgan comes out, covers on the left side. What's the start? Gavin comes straight to his feet. He's trying to fill hands. Morgan is testing. Gavin goes right back in at him a minute 34 in the match. He's down 7 1. Both locked up. Gavin knows he's got to hit something pretty big and leave something to his back. Maybe catch him. Takes a look at the clock, sees a minute 21 on it. Morgan, obviously, with a six-point lead, does not need to be the aggressor. Ware now goes in and locks up. Down to a minute ten remaining in this third period. Morgan's kind of went into shutdown mode, just staying square and trying to stay solid. Yeah, he's going to have to get aggressive and try and really create an angle. Tries to go a little shut by, not there. Now he goes right back into forehead to forehead. Now a lock up near the edge, a takedown by... Morgan will put him up 9-1 to one now on Gavin Ware. And back to center they come. So Ware will work from the bottom. 49 seconds now remaining. 9-1 to one the lead. Gavin goes back to the bottom. What's the start? Morgan covers him. 
tries to stop him. Gavin tripods up, trying to peel that hand off while he's coming up. 41 seconds remains here. Morgan just so heavy and so long. He just kind of just keeping on forcing him down, and Gavin can't even get his arms off the mat. So heavy, yeah. Now he finally gets up, peels, and gets away. 9 to 2, 24 seconds left. There's the fireman right there. So Morgan blocking it, goes to the front headlock. Gavin's trying to get out of that one. Or he just sucks it by, comes around behind. And now leads 11 to 2, gives the escape. It's 11 3. Five seconds remaining. Gavin Ware trying to get a move, gets a double leg in there. One second left right on the edge. There'll be no points awarded there. It'll be an 11 3 final. Gavin Ware is a regional runner up to Braden Morgan of El Dorado. That is a tough matchup. Period. He is, and he's only a junior, right? Right. Just see him one more year. He has just one loss on the season. Braden Morgan of El Dorado. Gavin Ware, regional runner up here at the uh, regional championships at 4A. So the Tigers have four going to the state championships. It will be Gavin Ware at 195, a regional runner up. We have two third place finishers with Parker Tholstrup at 120, Reed Nitter at 138. And at 106, Rhett Coppiff, a regional champion. Those four will be in Salina next week. Start Friday morning at the uh, Tony's yeah, Event Center. Is that how it's called? Something of that nature. It's, it's, it's the Bison Dental Center. Tony's Pizza Event Center. There you go. We're close. But that'll be next weekend. I know uh, Benito will uh, be glad to have you along as always and uh, ready to go next uh, Friday and Saturday at the state championships for our studio engineer, Bernie Panzella. For Benny Wallace, Rocky Downing here telling you to enjoy the rest of your sports Saturday.